Welcome to the Good Morning Niger Show, and how are you this morning? How are you? You didn't hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can barely hear you like that. You need to speak up. You okay? I mean, now. Uh -huh. Now I didn't hear you. How are you doing, my brother? Welcome to the show. Man, good morning. Good yeah, morning. good morning. Good morning. All right, so um, we're going to be discussing something very, very, you know, necessary today, looking at uh, the fact that you're a filmmaker and uh, you're a cinematographer. We just want to know how the whole industry is all about and the things that are, you know, challenges and there. But well, before we start, uh, let people get to know who uh, you are. So we're going to be playing one of your trailers. Maybe they know what it is, what you don't do. They will, go, they will come back oh, okay. and start the conversation proper. All right, let's check this out. All right, so that is one of uh, the works of uh, Barnabas and Mordi, and we're going to be discussing a lot about uh, the, in the movie space, you know, because a lot of times people still don't understand the things we put, uh, that put in place to make a good movie. So, uh, Barnabas, welcome again to the Good Morning Niger Show, and we're hoping that you are here to give us insights on things really happen for that industry. How are you feeling today? I'm, I'm feeling really, really good. Thank you. I actually slept really well because I haven't slept very well in like a few days. So okay. Last night, I was very really good. Okay, that's good. That's good. So uh, the good thing is that uh, I would, I would, I would like to know that the fact that you haven't slept, I'm sure you are working on some projects, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people not stop a couple of projects, so it's okay. Keeping me up. Okay. So how how would you say that the pandemic has affected? the uh, movie industry the movie space seeing the fact that okay you can't really do uh for a period of time they stopped shooting producing so how did that affect it so uh that really affected us financially basically because nobody could make any film because mm -hmm. we were all like in isolation and there was a lockdown so and if we cannot go out to make films we cannot make money the cinemas cannot operate. Um, so literally nobody was making money during the lockdown. So it wasn't that easy at all for Hollywood as a whole. So now that uh, we've been getting, at least the easing of the lockdown is happening, a few industries are uh, opening here and there. How, um, how is the movie industry uh, fending? Is it, is, it, is it moving? Is it progressing? Yes, we have, we have, we have commenced production basically. So. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm in pre-production for a couple of projects at the moment. So we commence production. So everybody has started slowly but surely still maintaining safety uh, measures you get because the virus is still out there. So you still need to stay safe as long as we are still working. You get so basically slowly but surely the industry is coming back gradually as other uh, industries are coming back to gradually. Hmm. Now, let's even, uh, for people who think, okay, maybe he's someone, I would, I would like to give them a run through of uh, some kind of the other projects you've done. You've done Elevator Baby, you've had a Hunter's Game, uh, you know, so this, I, I know Elevator Baby was big, it was quite a huge movie because people were talking about it. Elevator Baby, Elevator Baby, why Elevator Baby? How did, what was that about? You know, but let's just go a quick uh, recap on how that movie came about. What was that all about? What was the idea behind Elevator Baby? And why that title in the first place? Let's just do a quick recap before we move forward. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Elevator Baby is the brainchild of uh, Antil Studios and, uh, and our amazing director, uh, A.K. Mason. So it basically deals with um, two people in an elevator um, dealing with life, real life situations, basically. So the entire drama happened in the elevator and we see how they struggle to to, uh, to move on from what happened in the elevator and how the elevator basically affects their life from mm. that moment so, interesting and so being a cinematographer on that project how 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 was it for you i know that a lot of times there's a lot of uh, argument. There can be little arguments between the director, the cinematographer, the, uh, the, the the director of photography. So there's always a tussle between who gives what direction and who says what in production. How yeah. explain that to us? <laughs> okay, so um, I was basically, I was basically the second unit uh, cinematographer on uh, Elevator Baby. Okay, and uh, also the camera operator on Elevator Baby. So basically, uh, when we are making a film, we are basically trying to bring the director's vision to life. Mm -hmm. and so every every decision, every shot, everything we do has to bring out the director's vision. So the director's vision that we are trying to bring to life. So. No matter uh, any other opinion you might have, so that opinion 
to be in line with the director's vision for that okay. film. So we're trying to bring the director's vision to life. So there will be definitely be thought through. There will definitely be so many ideas. But at the end of the day, the director does every decide. every decision will be for the benefit of the film and is also for the director's vision at the end of the day. So yeah. Well, because um, it's, it's they have uh, conversations that say that most time or sometimes uh, mm -hmm. cinematographers can also double as directors in in, yeah. in most yeah. cases. Yeah, and then the, in the case where there's a, a director and there's a cinematographer, then uh, the director, like you said, the, the the vision of the director precedes that of the cinematographer as yes. long as it's, yeah. you know has you know it's all in line with the the actual goal. Now, sure. yeah. being, being, being a cinematographer in Nigeria, in the space in Nigeria, how uh, you would like to know the challenges you face being here in, uh, in Nigeria? Because they will always tell you that you are, um, every profession is more recognized outside the country than in Nigeria as it is. So a cinematographer outside, the kind of money we will collect compared to the cinematographer <laughs> in Nigeria. You know? yeah. So what are the challenges you face uh, being a cinematographer here in Nigeria? Uh, basically, for me, I know that money is actually very, very important. But uh, one of the major challenges is uh, the amount of time that we get to spend in uh, pre-production. Hmm. Because basically, uh, a solid pre-production is very, very important for the uh, execution of a film you get. So yes. for in Nigeria, yeah, you really don't spend that much time in the production because of um, money basically finances you get. So it, it, over, um, over there abroad, like they, they can spend more time here in the production for in Nigeria, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. um, if you get uh, two months in the production, then you know that that is actually a very, very good project you get. So we basically spend a few weeks in the production, then we are yeah, so me basically, yeah, I would, if if we had many months, even a year, two years, adequately for a project before principal photography, that would be nice. We get so, but uh, at this stage, the industry is presently at, we cannot afford to spend many many months and years in pre-production. But hopefully, we'll get them in due time yeah, because we are, we are definitely moving forward. We've come a long way, and there's still a long way to go. But yeah. not even moving forward. But why do you think this is a, an issue? Because I had a conversation with a, uh, a, a, a producer and a filmmaker one time, and we're talking about the fact that in Nigeria, we they produce film too quick. We do, <laughs> in, in one week, we don't shoot. We don't do part one, part two, part three. In two <laughs> weeks, we don't, you know, we they produce film too quick. And that uh, sometimes, most times, affects the quality of what we produce. And yes. now, there's been a, a, an argument that, uh, from the producer's point of view, is like, well, the, the, the audience wants you to produce more, so you need to produce more. Now, you saying mm -hmm. that as a cinematographer, it will be nicer if we have projects that take more time in production and planning, other than shooting in a short time just to meet up with the request of the so-called audience. So, as it is now, don't you think this is also affecting the, the, our standard of movies and uh, um, in par with the international standard of movies? Yeah, exactly. Like, which is why I know that earlier, that like, if we had enough time to plan, if we had enough time to prepare, if we had enough time to beat the script to a particular stage, if we had enough time to properly break down things, properly do different setups, we will execute properly, basically. So mm -hmm. having more time, we actually um, increase the value that, that is what I believe, mm -hmm. because there are so many projects that require a certain amount of time to properly execute. And if you don't get that amount of time, I don't think you'll be able to execute properly. That, that is what I think. Mm -hmm. And that, that will help to increase, increase the value of our work. Basically, if we had more time to properly uh, prepare and execute the film. Hmm. So um, as, as for a uh, cinematographer in Nigeria, when it comes to creation, like you say, you have to um, interpret the vision of the director in your shots. You have to be able to interpret this, the script, give the director or you, whoever the producer is what they see to come to real life. Yeah. So now, how, how do you really um, 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 be, be able to interpret these things correctly um, if the director just tells you, okay, I want this, I want this, I want that. Is there other ways that you guys will probably sit down and have a conversation and really get yeah, the, yeah. the actual idea? How does it work for you uh, personally yeah. as a cinematographer? 
Um, for me personally, um, I, would, I would always love to see the script and trust because I, I, I am always telling my directors and my producers that please, I would love to see this so that I can, I can have an idea of the story they were trying to tell. Then after seeing the script, and if it's something that I'm really interested in, then we can now further the conversation. So I sit down with the director basically, and we discuss about the story, we discuss about the themes in that mm -hmm. particular story. Mm -hmm. Then I, I I I listen to him and I and I understand the vision the vision that he's trying to execute and at, um, the, the the part of the story that he's trying to tell basically what 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 his vision will be for that kind of particular story. Then after yeah. that we, we move on to discussing color palette mm -hmm. and we break we literally break down each and every scene mm -hmm. in a script so that I can I can I can get into his head and I understand okay this is what you want to do with this thing okay this is the kind of that you want to do that will tell the story properly. So there's there's a lot of conversation that that uh, that goes on before we actually get on set for a piece of photography. So that's why there's a lot a lot a lot of time that that uh, that is required in pre-production when yeah. they execute. Like I said earlier, so many of these conversations are done by the director and the DP and the producers too. We also come in at some point so that we can discuss dearly and stuff that we we'll need to properly execute the vision of the director basically so there's quite a lot and lot of conversations that that, that that goes on before we before we are finally ready to shoot a particular film interesting now seeing the fact that you are majorly involved in the technical aspect of film creation you're majorly involved in that part uh would you say because there's an argument that uh the kind of equipments you use would determine the kind of picture or movie you would make. Now, would you say that the amount of equipment or the, the type of equipment you use actually affects the kind of production in the end? Would you say it affects it totally? Or would you say, okay, maybe it can <laughs> affect it, maybe? Let's, let's know about that. Let's be clear on that. Because people okay, say, so if it's not a red camera, then it's in <laughs> no go fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. So tell us about that. So okay, so um, this uh, uh, argument. So basically, what what my my personal viewpoint is that um, like there are different mediums uh, where we where we shoot for you get. So maybe mm -hmm. you might I'll be planning to shoot for YouTube. Okay. I I, I wouldn't advise you using maybe like a. Uh, I am camera like a red array that will cost you maybe a huge chunk of your budget. You get. Mm -hmm. If you are doing for cinema, there may be foreign platforms and so many other yeah. is that maybe that might be understandable why you're trying to do iron stuff because you are planning to to um, to um, to show your film at a very very high level. Mm -hmm. If you are doing for Instagram or YouTube, if if the production cost is not enough for the amount of equipment that you want, mm -hmm. then you should basically cut your, cut your costs adequately in order to fit into your budget. So what, what we have advised for people to do is to um, um, have a huge chunk of your budget for production design. Because mm -hmm. basically, production design is what the camera sees. So yes. your, if, if, if your production design is high end, if, if, you proper, if you do a proper production design, a proper art director for your sets and stuff. Your camera will, 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 will see beautiful, beautiful footages. Like your mm -hmm. set will be shining. You get like people, like people will just ask you, oh, okay, like, what camera did you use? And yeah. stuff. So I would advise people to, they should um, try and focus on production design. Your production design should tell the story even before your actors, uh, uh, um, uh, before your actors come and set, actually interpret their roles. So mm. if, imagine if a set particularly tells the story, oh, okay, um, and then maybe you are filming in the 1970s, then maybe you walk into a room and you see the room and it has the uh, set props of the 1970s, it has yeah. those um, cathode ray uh, TVs, it has yeah. those how uh, you get so you can if you can see that alone even without anybody telling you that this is 1970 you know that this is 1970 so mm -hmm. that um that production design must have done an amazing work people should focus